All right, the recording has started. Today is Sunday, August 21st, 2016. And I have Christopher with me. And it is Shamanic Question and Answer, Questions and Answers webinar. Um, let me start with a little chant. Obviously the system works, right? We are, we are using a, a new system, which is Zoom. And um, when you get the link, you just click on the link, it prompts you to install Zoom. Did it, did it prompt you to um, enter your password and uh, register, or you just can enter without registering? Yes, it let me enter it and Max without registering. I didn't have to use a password or um, I just clicked on the link. Uh-huh, so you, did you enter your name? Uh, I entered my name, yes. Okay, so that's about it. It's pretty fast and it works. Seems to be working, I like it. The advantage is it's quite a little more democratic. You can um, um, do more things. It's more, I, I would say it's more suitable for, for people. You don't have to be an expert to use it. So I encourage everybody start your own webinars using Zoom. It's beautiful. The limitation is, um, a free account is up to 40 minutes, so you have to stop and then start again. And paid account, it's $15 a month and it is unlimited time. So that's the only difference. And there is, you know, more whistles, but you know, the advantage is that everybody can do a recording. Uh, I will, uh, Christopher, I will give you uh, a right to do the recording allow record if you like to press the button it's about i would say half a gigabyte per hour so in in an hour your disk will be will have a, a half a gigabyte with two hours of a gigabyte so and then you can upload it to youtube so we have advantage that our videos can be uploaded to multiple channels right <laughs> so we have multiple paths to go, at least three paths. I would say the, the energy of these days is mixed. I feel a lot of low, low, lower vibrations. Uh, I think the August is a time of pretty dense lower vibrations, at least at this place. They drag you down and you can fight and fight and to stay in high vibe or you can um, just allow your, your vibration to lower down and ground, basically be with others, be with mainstream, be with 3D, be with lower vibrations of 3D. It really depends, again, tons of free choices. It really depends how you take it. Obviously, going down meaning your energy goes down, your flow of energy up is joy and upliftment, ascension, down is descendants, the, no, descending, descending, going down. And um, now we kind of a drag down. Take it easy. No, it's temporary. No, it's temporary. And use it for purification. Because no matter how how you're being dragged down, you still you still I'm pressing the button, sorry. I probably shouldn't. Okay. 
no matter how you've been dragged down, you still, your inner core remains un untouched. It's all an illusion. It's just a waves of planets, waves of geomagnetic polarities, geomagnetic polarity changes, which are adjusting your illusion of your body, illusion of your spiritual body as well. It's all a program, all an illusion, and you're dealing with illusion. So it's part of learning. Take it easy and discover something unchanging inside, even if the things around go down. There is still a core which is perfectly crystal beautiful, which is your connection to the divine mother, to the divine creator, to the to the mother. Yes. Chris, do you have any topics, questions? Um, at the moment, no, Max. Um, I came into this webinar just to gain some awareness and some knowledge on the shamanic um, uh -huh. approach. Uh -huh. That's basically it. Oh, okay. So you were attracted by the word shamanic. Um, it's just a word. It's just a word. Um, it's the same word as metaphysical. <laughs> it's the same word. It's the uh, same word as spiritual. The only flavor is that it's uh, another way of saying it's off stream, not mainstream. Uh, there was always a tradition of official priests, mainstream priests, priesthood, and alternative priests. So alternatives were called shamans and mainstream were called priests. That's the only difference. It has been always in all cultures on earth and uh, obviously it's, it's universal. So that's the only difference. Otherwise it is the same thing. You are professionally working with energies. With, with the spirit. It's professional, it's a professional work in the spirit. Professional meaning, not meaning being paid, but meaning doing it routinely, daily, hourly, minutely. It's a nature of ac action. That's the only thing. You're routinely working with, with the spirit. Psychic, magician, shaman, priest, priestess. Medicine woman, medicine man, just a spiritual person, a saint, a guru, a yogi. There is many names. I feel very attracted to shamans. I uh, I find home there. You know, in the shamanic ceremony, I find home being conducting the ceremony. In the church, I, I find home being on the altar conducting the ceremony. I guess it is just through the lifetimes, it's, it's, it's um, a typical place for me to do it. So here I have a tendency to create a church and people, <laughs> I offered our members, let's register the church and people didn't like the idea. I still, I still like it. I, I think it's, it's uh, there is nothing wrong with it. I think all we do is like, same thing as church, just without churchianity. Uh, that we are dealing with the spirit. Any questions? Um, yeah, um, drumming is is so much fun. I still didn't get the shamanic drum, the one which you hold in hand. It's um, a big, big um, drum, narrow, and it has a handle, so you can do it by hand, or there is a, like um, stick you can beat on it, and it's it makes wonderful low sound and this very low big drum sound makes me absolutely happy it feels really really healing really, really uplifting really spiritual um I, I i borrowed it from my reiki teacher barbara carlton and it was a beautiful huge one and it was actually modern it was it has a synthetic skin but it made so beautiful 
long resonating low sound. So what I did, I, when I did my Reiki sessions, I would carry it around the person and beat around. And mm. by some reason, go ahead. Wonderful. Mm. By, three, by some reason, I felt that going around in clockwise direction and doing three, respecting number three was, was, was right. I have no clue why, but that was my feeling. So I just did it. So doing, 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 any, any combinations of threes and going in three circles around the person. And drumming, drumming circles are everywhere. So now it's another way of um, participating. Of course, there are different drumming circles. I found drumming, drummers, drumming communities which were surrounded by mischief. Yes, mischief. Too many drugs, too low vibration of people joining. So, so I guess that's the main message of last few webinars. And now, measure your vibration. Calibrate where you are, where you go. Calibrate activities, your social circle, if it lifts you up if it drags you down. You can know pretty well where you are and where, where you are hidden. Depression is, is like really like falling down, right? And upliftment, joy, peace, balance higher ability to comprehend higher dimensions ability to be there is is uplifting the spirit both are needed right it's it's like breathing up and down some days in these days i feel like i can keep up but then a little thing would make me upset like i would not cry but that or not be angry, but little thing would just rise a wave of anger in me saying, I'm ready to explode for nothing, right? And, um, and that's a, an indication that things are not balanced, right? Things has, ideally they have to be balanced. So, so just measuring that, you, you don't, it's not that all of you are on the same level, it's, more, it's called Assembly, assemblage point or assembly point. It's the main focus at the moment of your spirit, how your spirit is attached to your body. The body is a physical illusion and the spirit is real, but it goes into your illusion through multiple chakras. And somewhere there is that assemblage point which is most connected. So your, the idea of Ascension, idea of spiritual growth is naturally to be connected as high as possible. And some of us, you know, are still in the low three chakras most of the time, and it's okay. You know, you cannot trick <laughs> the spiritual mechanics. It's not easy to trick the spiritual mechanics. And if you do, it becomes unstable. You can connect right there, but you wouldn't be able to hold it for a while. You would start twitching and glitching. The system wouldn't work fine unless the whole spiritual body is adjusted to, to handle that high vibration. Because the higher vibration, the more energy, the more spiritual energy you need to keep it up. Yeah, the higher the vibration you want to achieve, the more spiritual energy you need to keep it up. So options are you go up, you meditate, you go up, you do your ritual, you stay high and then go lower and you will be fine. Like breathing up, down, up, down. And as you grow, you grow from the second chakra to the third chakra, from the third to the fourth. And most of us are somewhere here around the third to the fourth. Jim is, somewhere here, right? You can see it, you can feel it. He is not from this world anymore. Simple things, he is just, he doesn't understand simple things, right? <laughs> he is all there. 
right? But also it is a service. I and mean, going to the people who are of lower vibration and who want to get higher, you come there and bring them the understanding that they're missing. Because all of us went through the lowest to the highest, up and down, up and down. We know the path. So we can give them simple understandings which they need, if they do. You know, at least we can offer them and then they decide if they want it. Chris, any comments, questions? The shamanic awareness, Max, um, I'm aware that our memory where we're coming into this reality. So, going into a webinar like this and trying to enlighten my awareness, um, I suppose that would give me the opportunity to reconnect with something within myself that has been left dormant for so long. Does that make sense? Ab absolutely, yes. Emotion is a great way to connect. Allowing yourself Emotion, emotional response. For some people, it's natural, and for other people, it's prohibited. So, really learning to emotionally respond to things when in a, in a protected environment is wonderful. Allowing yourself to cry, allowing yourself to laugh. When you go on the street and laugh, people look at you as, you know, they know you're crazy, right? They know for sure. Or you go on the street and cry, they know for sure you're, something's wrong going, going on. Uh, but um, but really, that's that's what you do to reconnect. Just blockages. The uh, in this space, there is physic physical body, etheric body, astral body, mental body. So this beyond the physical bodies, they have the blobs of blockages, and these blobs of blockages are uh needed needed to function because if you just remove them you will be flooded so um you need to remove them gradually not all at once gradually and that would require understanding that they're there forgiving them and often resolving yeah so there are typical there is a typical mistake a fear of a fear right a negative perception of negativity. We let workers who know about the, the idea of staying positive, we are afraid of lower vibration. We are panicking if we go down. We are blocking all negative thoughts. We are blocking even connective to negative energies, right? We want to stay high and positive and laugh all the time. And when the Sadness crawls in, it always does, often does. We are afraid of it, right? So, there is no universal solution, but a suggestion would be to dive in it and resolve. Dive and resolve. Diving is easy, like fall. But then resolve is you have to climb out. That's what I'm so sure. Like climb as it is a mountain. So that <laughs> lesson of climbing, lesson of resolving, that's what we do. How possibly we can survive in this chaos? I mean, the, the body is an example of purific self-purification. It's a wall on a wall on a wall and lots of pumps. Lymphatic vessels are pumping, heart is pumping, breathing is pumping. I'm talking it's a pumping action. Lots of pumping. It's a plumbing system. It's a physical plumbing system. Like if you look at microscope at live um, vessel, that is like lymphatic vessel, it does that. Ping, 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 plumbing. Every vessel. Blood vessels, they like inflated by the blood flow. And the cells in, inside the cell, there is a lot of 
factories, plumbing, moving things around. Um, in the brain, <laughs> electric. So it's an example, you know, how the physical part works. Um, I'm sure, I don't really know, but I'm sure that spiritual body, the astral, mental, etheric body, we don't have all the names for these bodies. We just have some of the names. Um, is even more sophisticated. It's this one is the which build the physical one. So etheric body is more sophisticated, and it is building their physical one. And there is also some sort of pumping is going on, but we have very little knowledge how it works because I don't think it's possible to translate. We go into meditation, we go into dream, and there we know the principles. But how do you bring it back? We really don't know. It's not possible for 3D mind to comprehend how the spiritual uh, body works, and I think it's it's not only the blockage which prohibits us from us understanding. I don't think it's, it is translatable. Part we understand it's a program, it's digital program. It has codes for sure. That's why hypnosis works, messages work, prayers work, prayers, uh, affirmations, commands. I, I was at the lesson of Ethan Borg, He's in Rochester near uh, Jim. I think Jim was there too, maybe. Yes, likely. So Borg is doing self-programming. He teaches self-programming. So you create textual programs, very simple affirmations, which have a distinctive starting point. And it's artificial, so you don't get it in the real life. So it's very artificial starting point, like... Authorization one, two, three, something like that. Authorization nine, two, two. A code which starts the command. And then a simple command in simple words, what do you want to achieve? And then the ending authorized by me and again the password. So you, when you pronounce that, it gets into the spiritual program and it has its own value. And as you repeat it, it, is, um, it, it does a miracle. So you can actually reprogram the reality using these codes. Of course, you have to be cautious and grow into that naturally. But that's what um, professional magicians do, professional, I would say, people, shamans. Yeah, that's, that's shamanic action using, Kabbalah is all about that, right? Um, the codes, finding the codes in the reality and dealing with the codes, trans transmuting, transforming the reality using the codes. Angels, that's their typical help how they do that. They do the prayers, angelic prayers in angelic language, which reprograms the reality. So it's, it's a code. Also, it is a wave. It has wave properties and resonance properties and like attracts like, the law of attraction. Good attracts good, bad attracts bad. We know that. Just thinking about something brings it into our reality. As we grow up, from, from lower three chakras into the higher four chakras, whatever we think about bring is, is, is attracted. We can change the reality. We can change the matrix by, by just focusing our will on certain things. The last few days, I, I'm just laughing how funny it is. I have the, that's a law of duplicates. There is emails come in duplicates the same phrase is repeated in two different emails, meaning two different things from unrelated people stand one under another. Like it's, it's just funny, like a strange name, like again, pi seven, eight would be in the two lines next to each other from completely different. So it just universe reminds us, you know, it's all an illusion. It's all uh, the law of attraction works. Just things come in pairs and attract each other and just show themselves synchronicities. There is no logical reason why would two different people with strange names write to me and, get, and end up in the same two lines in my email list. <laughs> Any comments? 
No, Jim. Very interesting, though. Did you call me Jim? Sorry, I'm actually dated you that. <laughs> All right. Second Go time ahead. I was called Jim. Interesting. What do I need to look more like Jim? Jim does that these days. Do I look like Jim? Basically what it is, it is focus on the third eye and transferring, transferring your consciousness, the, the, the point of assembly, transferring it in the third eye area. So all of you, you are there, you are here. You can transfer it into heart, into your knee, anywhere outside of you. It's, it's, it's easy. That's part of the meditation, where you are at the moment. So transferring your, in your third eye and then creating the amplified wave. Let's call it amplified wave. The, it's similar to Kundalini rising, amplified wave in your spine. That's the major yoga exercise creating the amplified wave in your spine to open that third eye. You are there, and that's the connection to the Divine Mother, to the Divine Creator. So that's the meditation. And when he is in that channeling state, he can see out there, and it's beautiful. So when he does that, he can just see it. And... He is there, and it's, it's really hard to translate what you see there to here. So whatever he says, it's a poor translation because things there are not very easy to, 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 to translate into human language. Not possible. So these are reflections of what he can see there. <sighs> Who do I have with me? Hello, guest. Oh, that's Hi, Wendy. What's wrong with your camera? Oh, I just didn't have it on right now. Um, oh, okay. I, I, All right. My, my, my signal wasn't very good, so I've just been keeping it off. But Okay. We, we can see you just fine and hear you just fine at the moment. Um, yeah, everything that you said, I couldn't speak a minute ago. But whatever, All right. Everything that you said about that experience of the, the names of the people and the synchronous and, and everything you just said about the experience of that connection that shamanic experience and the kundalini opening and that's exactly what happens to me exactly i don't know how else to explain it i from the moment one day they just told me you are a galactic sh shaman and we have information for you and it was just like the world exploded for me wonderful Wonderful. And I died, I died, I died, I died, I died, Yes, I always feel very connected when you're singing, and I, I feel that all of that energy, all of that, I can't even describe what I feel, I'm, and I'm very tired right now, so you'll have to forgive me. I came in late, and I just woke up. All right. I just have a lot going on in my world, and um, but I, I, as soon as I saw shamanic questions, I was like, okay, I'm really tired, but I really want to hear this. <laughs> Because it just speaks to my heart so much because that's exactly what they told me, yet I didn't know how to express that to anybody. It's like, how do you tell somebody, well, they just told me you're a galactic shaman, and even if you don't know what that means, you're going to figure it out. And it was just so strange. I just, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's what we are. Yeah. That's what we are. We do it like um, habitually. That's, you know, habitual shaman. You have the problem and you have two options. Like you see the dirty dishes in the sink. What do you choose? To wash them or to do some miraculous dance so they become clean? 
<laughs> you first try the dance and then see, oh, it doesn't really work in this reality. <laughs> All right, let, let's just watch them. <laughs> and even, and like you said about, I meet, other, and now I'm finding myself finding other people out there in the world who have, are, are having the same experience. And, um, and yet sometimes I don't feel as if I've walked the complete path, but yet I feel as if I've done it a million times. Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, Ascended masters coming back. We are that. And it's not the pride. It's just, a, you know, it's a routine again. That's what we do. That's what we do. We, um, and you, the, the viewers, you are ascended, ascended masters coming back. There is nothing wrong with it. It's, that's, that's what you are. All right. Um, I'm trying to press the button and I, I'm confused a little. Oh, Wendy, you are talking. Are you talking? I muted myself. And then okay, I, muted. I see now. All right. Because the, it just, the, the system says that you are talking and I don't see you talking. All right. That's all right. Thank you. Um, Alayna Mahana Maya Aila Mahana Mahayana Rumana Adna Yeah, somehow in talking I'm prohibited, prohibited myself to be sad, but when I chant Sadness is natural. I think it's per permitted by culture to, to, I always liked sad songs, like always like the sad songs. And the people ask, you know, why don't we sing something happy? And I say, yeah, not the same vibe. <laughs> That's interesting, Max. Because I've always been attracted to sad songs as well. Um, that's just an observation. It's a yeah. healing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's part of it. Maybe there's a part of me that always has too, and I think it's because it's healing to everyone involved. Okay, I have a topic which is sitting on my um, agenda for three years now, or longer. And we have a strong uh, team, so I think we can um, manage it. I wanted to talk about, uh, how do you call it, disasters. You call it disasters. There are several words which people use nowadays, like um, end of the world, all of that. Yeah, the, uh, the crisis. And talking about the crisis, let me check the battery. I have another half an hour, and then I need to bring my charger. That's all right. So... Uh, would you would you like to go into that dark side and leave please, the Please, yeah. Say again? Yes, please. All right. Wendy, how about that? How about the dark side? I, to be honest with you, don't spend much time there. All right. So when we dive there, you, your, your task will be take us out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you will be the guardian. <laughs> All right. And I don't know how long I can stay. I, I may. Oh, have fine. To yeah, leave any time. I can deal by myself. No problem. <laughs> I can talk into the screen. I can see myself. So I have a company. Yeah. <laughs> I, do. I hear you. I understand completely. No, that's August. In in the in, you know end of September, the counts will pick up. I'm not worried. It's <laughs> no, we already passed through a few Augusts, so now it's it's just a habitual thing. So dark side. Um. Basically, the short story is that, you know, we expect some sort of a disaster some, sometime in the future, and uh, it's an illusion, right? So the whole thing is an illusion, and the disaster is a lesson which is offered to you, but you can take it or you can skip it, basically. You don't really have to dive in. And as you start thinking about disasters, you, um, you attract it to your your reality to your future. Every one of us, it's like Mandela effect. 
right? Mandela effect by definition is people from different realities end up in the same reality, in the same lo location, locality, and meet. And when we start investigating where, from which reality did you come, and you know which facts from the past do we remember? You just discover that we come we come from the realities with different pasts. That's Mandela effect. It was discovered recently, I guess, people, you know, I was aware of such things like that for a while. I was drawing this schematics of multiple pasts uh, meeting together before that. But basically now it has a name and it became a part of popular culture. So people have fun discovering Mandela effect in reality. Um, you know, it comes from the idea that in, in reality of some people, Nelson Mandela was dead. In reality of other people, it was alive. He, he, he was alive. Um, so uh, the same thing happens with the future. We are here on the crossroads. We are in the crossroad where we have different pasts, different futures. And if you focus on the fear of the disaster, you're likely to end up in the reality where it's 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 more real, and if you are so high in your vibe, you can't really even think about the disasters. You end up on the path where it's not as real. It may you know just pass by. Like disasters happen on Earth like constantly, but they're kind of tiny. They don't occupy the global attention, global focus of attention. So, so it's it's. It's an option, it's like astrology, like the planets come around and offer you certain vibrations and it's up to you whether you engage in this vibration or not. So that's the first thing to understand. It's an illusion and it's a service, a lesson which is offered to everybody and it's up to you whether to focus on it or not. Okay. Um, Second simple message, yes. So Max, what about the man-made disasters? How do we avoid buying into that reality? Yes, same thing, same thing, same answer. Okay. Same answer. You're on crossroads. If you're afraid and it occupies big part of your thinking, if it excites you, you are more attracted to end up there. If if it doesn't excite you anymore, if it's just, you know, we'll handle it anyway. I'm basically, the trick is, the trick is the solution, the shamanic solution is to tell yourself every half a second, tell what? Here is a test for you. That's exactly why I don't. I don't live there. I don't go there. I don't focus on it. I don't think about it because it, I, it is not part of my reality. I don't wish it to be. Therefore, I do not create at least as, mo as much as I can. I do not create the, the being in that vibration. I even thinking about it. Nice. So you just said 20 negative things. I don't. I repeat. Press, I refuse, I restrict, I build a wall. Now tell me a few positive things. What do you do positively to? <laughs> so what I, exactly, and I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people ask me that. What I do is I know it exists. I allow it to exist as part of the perfection of creation. Yet what I do is focus on putting out positive vibrational um, thoughts, intentions, actions, desires, um, what it is that I want to see in the world, the change that I do want to see rather than um, pushing against what I do. <laughs> Just a second, there is a reality knocking on the door. Hold on. <laughs> That happens in 3D reality, doesn't it? <laughs> All the time, Wendy. I know, I'm 
know, I was trying to talk earlier and I was trying to, you know, do a couple of things and take care of the dog and I just woke up and I was like, okay, I'll just be quiet for a couple of minutes. You know? Oh, wonderful, yeah. Um, but then when I, as soon as I saw it, when he said shamanic questions, I was like, hmm. So, and, and isn't that, uh, talk about freaking All right. The people who are guided here are the people who are, are, are in the same frequency, so. Sorry, Wendy, I missed that last piece. These types of gatherings are of the same frequency, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so negative things prohibit yourself to dive in. The positive things to understand, realize, pay attention to the fact that you are an ascended master. Wonderful. That you are an avatar. We are avatars. You are an avatar. A definition, uh, somebody asked me, what, what, what does it mean, avatar, right? So the definition of avatar, I think it comes from Asia, most likely from uh, India, and most likely from, what's their language? There is language there. Some of the Hindu languages, the basic one, is um, um, that avatar is an incarnation of God on earth, like Jesus, incarnation, embodiment of God on earth. And uh, yeah, Jesus said, be like me, be a son of God, be God here walking on earth. And what does it mean? It means that you connect and listen and invite and say, you know, I will do, I grew up sufficiently to embody God. I build my spirit body sufficiently to embody God and to carry the God's will. So it's, it's very much what church tells you, Christian church and what uh, the saints do, what the gurus do, yogis do it's it's universal shamans shamans yeah you channel the channel and you invite the higher spirit and allow your body to be their home for this, the session now you just do the same for the rest of the life you uh channel all the time you don't have to step out there is trans channeling and conscious channeling Trans conscious conscious channel also called psychic work, shamanic work, right? Uh, being magician, priesthood, service. So you just connect, and every time you have a choice, you ask what to do, and in, in the heart you will discover it. It's kind of so obvious what is what gods want to do, God wants to do, the mother wants to do. Uh, yeah, you're asking, you know, lots of people are killing others for their understanding of what God wants them to do, right? <laughs> That's the third chakra is working, right? They're still there in the third chakra. They, um, it's a chakra of the warrior, right? They are playing the lessons of the third chakra. Um, and that's a lesson of lesson of the first chakra is survival, right? Many of them just surviving, right? Uh, second chakra is communication and trade, and third chakra is dominance, play this hierarchy game and dominating others. Most of the world still lives in these three chakras. You know, when you watch television, survival, commercials. Uh, dominance and suffering, dominance and violence, violence, yes. So they're playing these games and um, just be aware of where you are. So if you're in the lower three chakras, you're mm, not there, you're not avatar anymore. And whatever you perceive to be your uh, uh, doing their will of God, being, God, uh, how do you call it, uh, the weapon of God is, um, is, somewhat imperfect yet it's you just it's it's not that it's unreal 
you're still playing the games, but but that's sort of not the earth we are heading to. You know, just understanding the idea of ascension is that the again there is a split, there is cross multiple pasts, one single intersection where we are, and multiple futures. So, people playing um, lower three chakra games, they have been playing it for a while. There was a destruction of Atlantis and the whole dark history of the modern humanity, and it might continue somewhere somehow, but but really, it's it's you know it's it's not it's not it's not ours. It's your choice again. It's your choice. Where do you want to be with the old humanity or the new humanity? If you want to be with the new humanity, shift to the upper chakras and um, be in love. Yeah, feel love, perceive yourself loved, and uh, serve God in this way. So. Yeah, if, if, if you're in a fight, understand where you are and just understand you prefer that. If it is your choice, it's your choice, right? If you prefer the love, so that's the separation line between heart and the third chakra and diaphragm in between. So if you shift it up, you are in love by definition. If you shift it down, you are in a fight by definition. So. Just pay attention where you are and um, understand you create your reality. You will end up where, you, where your vibration is. Very simple. Want to be in love? Fine. Want to be in fight? Fine. Want to be in survival mode? Fine. So, so coming back to the idea of disasters, there's the first chakra talking. Ah, survival, yeah. Panic, survival. We need to survive no matter what. What if something happens? Ah. So... The solution, the choice, possible choice is I'm protected, I'm protected, I'm protected. I am just a body embodying God. Uh, I'm a body embodying the Divine Mother. I invite the spirit, if my body is needed here, I will survive. If my body is not needed here, whatever, right? So accepting the idea of death, Death is, is easy, right? Death is like going to sleep and no pain anymore, right? There is so much pain, so if you just die, there will be no pain. So uh, accepting the idea of death is, is um, one of the most healing uh, experiences, right? When you realize that dying would be better than what you have now, um, and that the soul is will remain and the experience will remain, your personality will remain. Just learning that through the mental exercise, right? Through the heart exercise, knowing that you are not the body, the body is an illusion. So as soon as you realize that the body is illusion, death becomes easy. And the next step, you know, if that body is here, why don't we invite the creator, the divine mother to play through it? And then it solves the, the panic, the idea of, of the disaster. So now you're here not to fight the disaster, just to serve during whatever happens. So if the collective reality, if collective consciousness decides to play this game, you will be here to gear the collective humanity through the game and come out purified. And that's actually in the plans. Uh, the date is very vague. People, you know, it came through Jim from L, our uh, friend uh, L, one of the collective spirits, L. Um, many L signifies the God and also the collective spirit, which is responsible for material balance in this world, energy balance in this world. It's like banking system for the solution for the banking system of the matrix is called l spirit collective so this this l spirit collective told us that you know in their plans 2027 is a year of the collapse of the economic system and can, can consequent disasters and i first i paid attention second i decided you know <clears throat> just one of the options you know it doesn't come up with <clears throat> in other channelings but surprise, a few years later now, if you Google 2027 channeling, other channelers start, started talking about this thing. So again, it is a choice. 
that would be our symbol. That is <laughs> Mandela effect in the future. We come, we'll go to different futures. You and I might end up in a different futures. Might end up in the same, it's our choices which make it. And uh, um, so it is possible that it will happen and you will end up there. But again, your vibration will define in which of the multiple futures you will end up. So the short message is become an avatar, become a body consciously repeating the consent of inviting the highest spirit and playing through you, playing the higher will, God's will, mother's will through yourself. So that's a simple, and then when, as, as you play, it's not your worry anymore. All right, here's a Jewish joke. Why is it Jewish? Because of the vibration, just Jewish vibration. Uh, so Abraham cannot, cannot get to sleep and he turns over and over and over and his wife, say, Sarah, asks, why are you spinning here and not letting me sleep? And he says, uh, I owe to Yatsik, I owe him a certain sum of money, say five, 500 rubles, and there is no way I can give it to him. I don't have that. So Sarah rings, the, you know, rings Yatsik in the middle of the night and says, Yatsik, uh, Abram won't give you the money. And he says, you can sleep now. That's his worry now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely example, Max. And uh, I'm just reflecting here while you speak. And I left the forest before I came to this webinar, and I spent three hours in the forest, okay, with my dog. And I came back out of the forest, and I, I came onto a motorway, and there was cars zooming by me, okay. And immediately. I had to protect myself because I wanted to get to the other side of the road. Now I used the pedestrian crossing, but the fear came back into the vessel again, that I will survive this journey from A to B. Now the four hours, three and a half hours that I spent in the forest, I actually felt like another tree in the forest because it was part of that creation, okay? But as soon as I came back out, I was back in the game. Okay, the game of life, as I call it, which can be quite dangerous because the game of life I see is back in shark-infested water. Because this reality that we live in, the powers to be don't want us to tap into your awareness, okay? They want us to live up here in the ego mind, which will just take us completely away from this shamanic awareness that you're describing. Yeah? Yes. Yes. So, it, sorry, Wendy. I was just going to say, it's no wonder I connect with you so much when just everything you just said about being in the forest and the tree and being with your dog. Okay, I'm like, okay, no wonder I have this <laughs> strange connection to you. I was like, okay, this is really funny. <laughs> And it was even a problem for me leaving the forest because I'd no time. I'd no way of finding the time out and there was nobody where I was. And I told my wife I'd be back in two and a half, three hours for dinner. And I got to a stage where I said, I don't want dinner. I don't want to leave this. And then the fear element came back in again and I could visualize her in the kitchen preparing dinner saying, where is Christy? Okay. So really... What I wanted was to lay my bed where they sit was up against the tree and not leave, okay? My dog was rested beside me, but I knew that the conditioned mind, unfortunately, as I call it, the SIM card, there's so much unwanted information on the SIM card and going into the forest gives me the opportunity to delete, okay? <laughs> but when I come out of the forest, I'm back in the game, you know, that's sort of way. And 
this game can be dangerous. It depends what way we play it. And me personally, yeah, it's something that I try and avoid on a daily basis. I don't go into the forest every day, but if I could, I would. I surely try. I surely try to go. <laughs> well, I pretty much, I pretty much am in the forest almost every day, or in the farm field, or in a tree, or next to a tree. Or in the grass. I have to at least. Well, I have to take my dog out anyway. But um, yeah, you know that that's one of the reasons I got a dog was so that I would be forced. When I knew my body needed to be healed more than it was. Yes, Wendy. As I, as I, before I went to the forest this morning, I checked my emails, and when I came out of my email server, I just came across the news of another suicide bomber in Turkey that had killed 50 people. Okay, we can say, okay, Christy, that's just another illusion. It's real, or it's not real, okay? It's a game that's being played out. Even taking that image into the subconscious, okay? It's stored on the SIM card. It's there. How do I delete it? Okay? Um, I haven't got the answer to that at the moment. But when I get into the forest, I'm back into what you just described, Max, which is this creation of source, which we're all part of. But the powers to be that play this illusion out on a daily basis wants to keep us in that fear mode. And that's an emotion we play with on a daily basis. Okay. So, I was at that stage, 2009, right? 2009, 2010, 10. And um, basically, the idea of global conspiracy was very dear to me because it was... Um, a lot of understanding came with that. Global conspiracy, negative conspiracy. Stephen Greer uh, and lots of other sources. Uh, I, I dug pretty deep in that, into that. I was digging and digging and digging. I discovered lots of interesting things. Um, uh, if somebody is interested, Project Camelot, Project Camelot on YouTube is one yes. of the most... Um, Kerry Cassidy. Yeah, Kerry Cassidy, most prolific, and um, it digs out all of that dark side pretty well. Uh, yeah. I was in Rochester with um, Richard Dolan. Uh, Richard Dolan was uh, a leader of our U4 uh, community, and um, there was a monthly meeting, so we had we were exposed to his progress from just being a writer to becoming a public figure and television producer. So that was very interesting. And actually that would move, uh, I first wrote the book and then I moved to YouTube. So I followed Richard Dolan steps. Thanks, Richard. So yeah, research that, but um, again, it's an illusion, right? It's an illusion. And um, everything's an illusion. It's like, even the spirit is an illusion. You, you understand, right? So. The, the least real illusion is the physical life. Le less, uh, the more real illusion is the matrix. Even more real illusion is the spirit which created the matrix. And it is layers and layers and layers until you get to complete peace and nothingness, which is real. So nothingness, the God, as stillness is real. And everything else is an illusion built build on top of that. It's a program on the program on the program on the program. And these programs are alive, conscious, based on the waves, not only the code. So it's, it's, it's a force of illusion. But as, a, as experience, Bashar says, even incarnation is an illusion, but experience of incarnation is real. So experience is real, right? So they have certain level of reproducibility. Now, where, where I'm heading is that... Uh, how do you heal the trauma of understanding global conspiracy? Yeah, so global conspiracy, before you, don't, before you understand it, it's like you think that every 
terrorist act is in nature of humans and it's like the darkest uh, of understandings, right? If you just realize that you're unprotected, that, you know, at any point, the, like there was a, I think we lived in Maryland at that time, and there was a random shooter on the streets. He would just shoot random people, mostly innocent people, right? He would shoot innocent people just walking on the streets. And, you know, you face the decision, would you like let your kids out? Would you go out or would you hide with dark windows? Because, you know, if, if, if there is electricity inside, you can, you can be shot through the window. If it is dark, you can sit in the dark, then you're less visible or you put blinds and stuff like that. So, so just that decision, look, there is one person. So chances of him killing you are lower than chances of being hit by a car, like many times lower, but still there is that public fear and there was mail in the middle, mail in the, like with Amtrak's and all other nonsense, right? So the choice, you know, how afraid do you want to be? It's a choice, right? It's again, the reality is the illusion. You're given a lesson and you choose where you want to be in this lesson. How afraid do you want to emotionally and behaviorally, right? Logically, emotionally, behaviorally. Like, do you really allow yourself to be afraid? Do you perceive, do you really get into the trap thinking that you are unsafe? And last thing is like, what do you really do? What do you really do? Like uh, my, uh, uh, in Russia we had that key moment. Like in, in America, I think uh, top moments, defining moments who are like, where have you been during the Kennedy assassination? And second, where you have been on 9-11? Like, two defining moments. In Russia, same caliber of the moment was uh, good guys, democracy was uh, in charge. And then there was a putsch uh, take over the power of the power by negative guys. There was, like, generals of the army who had tanks and army behind them. And... Uh, they basically already took over the uh, most of the critical points, except um, Yeltsin, Yeltsin, one of the guys. He was kind of old-fashioned, brave guy, like more like yeah, a copycat of Churchill, copycat of Churchill. Yeah, same type of character. When nothing is when 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 there is peace, he was useless drunk, right? When there is a confrontation, he would stand up. <laughs> Just a Churchill, like Elson was like Churchill. So he stood up and said, that's my territory, that's White House, big house, and we have will protect it to the last. And just that step divided the, the country. And I was outside of the Moscow seeing the cloud about it. Seeing the cloud about it. And the dark cloud was sitting. I was just outside sitting, that cloud sitting there for several days. And I had kids with me, like tiny kids. And um, uh, what do I do, right? So in my institute, there was, I had the, a little room, a big room and uh, like filled with junk. It was kind of junk, junk, junk yard, a short junk yard. And um, it's all complete disaster. So, uh, some people would commute in from afar and it's inconvenient and also have to pay the rent. So uh, one of my people in the lab, in the bigger lab, uh, he just started to live in my room, right? Like research room, you know, we, we cook there, it, like it's, it's rush, right? You cook in the research lab, you sleep in the research, we have, um, how do you call it, uh, foldable beds. So, so it was pretty, pretty decent. I had to clean up after everyone. He left lots of junk and dirt and never washed his dishes, right? And he cooked their special, his um, uh, Georgian food. He wasn't German, but he was cooking that. So smell of onion, fried onion and tomatoes was in the lab. That was beautiful. While you were doing the research as well. So, and that's a, the stairs, how do you say stand over or stand, stand, stand in? When, when two powers, military powers stand against each other. So he took um, lots of bottles, chemical bottles, filled them with um, 
all organic liquids which we had tons because there was inherited organic storage there like um like like gasoline and he was he was no he was he knew what he was doing so he made bombs right there very simple like you have to light them with with a lighter and throw into the tank and the television was showing the tanks so he went there there was a bridge and there were bushes behind the bridge you can see it on television if he was sitting in the bushes ready for the tanks to go over to attack the white house he was the one maybe he was the only one right and i couldn't do that no i i was uh it was me yeah i would maybe talk and uh, report but fighting on the street i and and there was a song there will you uh basically the song was will you stand up will you go to the plaza a big big area is called plaza right in english yes yeah plaza will you will you stand stand up and go to the plaza that was the song and it was very very profound because you know in russian history only 15 people came out came out to the plaza on one time and five people on the other time and they were like persecuted uh, persecuted right so so he was the one he was waiting and the tanks didn't go so he survived the tanks just didn't they were waiting and waiting and they never they never went to attack the house they were shooting from afar but they didn't go uh to hand uh, like people did not attack the house and then the army looked around figured out they decided that you know they would stay with the people not with the uh, officers and so the army made a decision basically oh, and uh, and that was over and it was a celebration and the cloud disappeared over the cloud wasn't there anymore just psh, the sun shined it was very uh, spiritually charged as well and as the cloud was waiting there i went you know you still have to go shopping right you need like milk and stuff so you go and wait in line rush everybody waits in lines and the line is scared and depressed and, and silent and then one person starts just talking to herself yeah those democrats you know what good do they bring their prices raised went up the produce disappeared nothing good of this yeltsin i oh, know i like the new guys and everybody is silent and i say are you really <laughs> and <laughs> it was everywhere right you have to stand up for the truth right <laughs> or you just pretend and, oh you calculate that they, they will they will be you know blah 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 that was silent silent conversation we had like you are taking sides because you think that will be a winning side right and are you going are you risking to stand are you risking to take sides so one some someone took sides and others you know you really want to survive that's all so the lesson uh it was an interesting lesson right a interesting lesson sometimes it goes bad way right uh, in many countries and many times it went the wrong way and again your mood your passion your uh emotions define the future which you end up i'm sure there is there was a split and lots of russia went in a parallel timeline they went in a different in a different um future um so the lesson here actually is you do your research you do your homework right you do your homework you understand who is who is who and i did lots of homework at that time i did like most of my research was into conspiracy at that time and in 2009 it was in conspiracy in um, ufology basically in um, who is actually on the top like powers that be who, who are they like what are the personalities are they humans or aliens right are there dark spirits there what is the mechanics of that what's their agenda and then you have to you have a choice to go next step right you have to have a choice to go next step you are a shaman you are a magician you are a priest you are an avatar you 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 can 
take on yourself a duty. And when you already did, and Chris, I invite you to take on yourself a duty to keep up the vibration, no matter what, to hold the vibration, hold the hope, even in the darkest of times. Like in the Holocaust, there were still people who were praying and in peace. They would go in gas cameras, still praying, still in peace. They could be naked, but there is nothing that can break your inner peace, right? You can still be in, uh, in, uh, in a bliss. You hold that vibration and then you incarnate and hold it again. Hold the vibration of peace and bliss. That's it. And, and that's what, what's, what, what's the mechanics of that. So the whole system is collapsing. And then the seeds of the highest vibration of the four dimensional vibration will have more opportunity to grow after third vibrational uh, game collapses. Uh, maybe, possibly, it's the only way for ascension. I'm, I, I'm not sure. I hope there is another one. I really hope. Even if that happens, I would still look for the least harmful transformation. It doesn't have to go that bad down. Like in Russia, it went down, but not all the way down. I was walking on the streets of Russia looking for the signs of complete collapse. And I had the portable receiver and sometimes it would catch the Radio Liberty from um, Czechia. It was uh, based in Czechia. And um, um, was transmitting. Hold on a second. Yes, um, where was I? I started the new story, I guess, but I forgot which one. I know. I was like, where do we leave off? I, you... Well, yeah, you were talking about how to, you know, what would be the best way to ascend. And hopefully, oh, right. keeping Thank your you. vibration high would be it, ascending. Yeah, so, so the, the, yeah, the crisis, the Radio Liberty crisis, all time phone. All right, the Radio Liberty crisis was, um, they were transmitting, this is like foreign voices, the only fresh information coming radically more truthful than, than anything else we had there. It was still, uh, the press just started to pick up the free press. So it was 92, I guess, 93. Uh, and there was a major crisis already going on. The, the, our ruble went from, uh, its value went down like about 100,000 times. <laughs> so we, we were uh, millions, millions, millions. We were counting things in millions and millions sounds like lemon. And it was like ridiculously funny. So people would call millions lemons, like million, lemon, lemon, million. Yeah, how many lemons is this car, right? Or how many lemons is that apartment? Um, so Radio Liberty was the one, the source of information. And uh, it was, all, there was all, it's, it's funded by CIA. Thank you, CIA. Thank you, Radio Liberty. And it hosts, it's, it, the journalists are Russian immigrants who know, understand Soviet Union and also understand the West. And they bring that understanding through the, through the barriers, through the closed border to us. And they found that perfect, sad tone of compassion, which we needed. It was nowhere else, but they were talking with that perfect, sad tone of compassion. 
that was even if, even if the information was not related just the tone was absolutely perfect that what we needed to hear compassion because otherwise everything was completely crazy right and during the history of soviet times there were radio blocking stations which were on the border and everywhere which would whenever the radio liberty would transmit they would and tune into that frequency and transmit noise so you you couldn't really hear and also was in addition to noise there was that uh, sound of the emergency car which would make it unbearable to listen that, ew, 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 ew. so most of us who were in in and all we we were used to listen to that noise so now when we hear that noise it it brings up the emotions of of that time and we actually love it because you were connected you were connected to something higher that was upliftment for that time it was the only tiny thread which connected us to a bigger reality because that reality was was low so now you guys are addicted to jim's voice <laughs> because that is the thread which connects you to higher reality. and bashar jim's and bashar's voice connected connects you to the higher reality uh, so at the time of the crisis everything was going wrong and their jammers they called jammers the stations which produce noise started working i would say they still worked but not as well i think the uh soldiers which were supposed to press the button to make the noise they were interested in to, to listen what they say so they wouldn't press the button in a right time but would, they would press the button at a time when there is no transmission so they would still do the job but they would do it intentionally in a sloppy way so there was a transmission and at the time they read the book um like constantly um many hours of the book at the certain times and the book was about i don't remember which city but uh how maybe it was the whole earth how the city decays when um, there is no electricity and you know services and uh, i don't remember much i somehow i'm blanking on that but at that time it was very important to understand you know what to expect from the big city without electricity and moscow was turning off lights once in a while like for a few hours just to save the power because the financial system wasn't working anymore so say uh, I don't know the electric station didn't get the gas. How would they buy the, the the fuel? So they wouldn't buy the fuel. They wouldn't produce electricity. So that was what um, was sort of indication that things like really go down, and hospitals would 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 like. I don't think at the time there were like local generators. So you know, a hospital without electricity is a complete disaster, especially the the. Um, nursery right where, where they they have children born without electricity it's it's it's, it's a nightmare um my children were like three and four three and five at that time so we just went through it but you know it, it's pretty bad okay and uh, i was listening how how much worse can it become i was kind of planning understanding realizing how much worse can it become uh the big city without electricity and one thing I realized, you know, small places in Russia outside of the big cities are just fine. They they're used to that. They have own generators. They, if the generate if there is no gas, they they lived for hundreds of hundreds of years without electricity. They still have the culture when they can live without electricity. It's not great, but it's not it's not nothing new. It's nothing new. Like Siberia, they they okay i mean the only thing you really need made of metal is is an axe everything else you can do from wood and stuff maybe nails would be handy but other than axe and and, and nails maybe a hammer a hammer you can make from a stone so everything else you can survive yeah and in russia winters are pretty bad here in the san diego i would say summers would be pretty bad without electricity i i would say if uh if the weather like that and you don't have water 
it's time to run away. I thought I'm time to go north. There is certain certain uh, climate range where you can survive all year long, or just you know, without extreme heat and extreme cold. Um, about I would say, let me think where it was. About the same time when the things started getting a little better. At that time, I realized it's time to run to the West. Yeah, that was complete, like, you know, for me, you know, escape was an understanding, you know. Everyone, let's let's go, you know. We had another Jewish joke. Um, people are talking uh, in a group, secretly or maybe not secretly, and like Jews are talking in a group. And another Jew comes to them and says, I don't know what you're talking about, but it's time to go. And that's all Jews were talking about, you know, is it time to go and where to go, right? Is it time to go and where to go? Is it, you know, are pogroms coming or maybe not? Uh, here's another example. It's all on the same topic. Uh, I researched my genealogy. After I moved to the West, I came back after, I had certain time of years, like maybe six years, I couldn't come back because, no, incorrect. Five years, I couldn't come back because of the visa problems. 96 to 2001, I couldn't come back. So then I came back and I was eager to capture the photographs of my um, family album. So I took my scanner and I went around different relatives scanning all the family albums and writing down all the histories. And that's where I discovered lots of interesting histories. In a few days, it was like, wow. And then after that, I was digging internet, which just picked up, so like 2001, seven years after after internet became popular. Um, there is lots of genealogy information and Jewish genealogy. So uh, it came out that um, some of my ancestors come from, and this is actually the line which connects me to very far line of rabbis. Uh, they come through uh, Dubasars, uh, Romania, near, what's the closest? Uh, near Crimea, it's not far from Crimea, very close. Um, Turkey, Romania, yeah, th that area. Um, so that was, they were on the Soviet part, on the part of Russia. Um, and that was the area of the pogroms in 1900 and 1903. So America knows about these pogroms because it was a huge influx of Jews. That's uh, one of the biggest immigrations of Jews in that 900, now 903 through 914, but the way was 903, 1903, 1903. So my ancestors were in Dubasar. Dubasar was a medium sized town, maybe a few thousand people. What was interesting about it, it was predominantly Jewish. It was uh, Ashkenazi, mostly Ashkenazi Jews, maybe 70 to 70% 70 of Jews. So dominant, it was still under control of police and army and Russian Tsar and stuff like that, but but there was more Jews than non-Jews. So the rumors about pogroms started long before that and they were coming from the officials. It was clearly official letters, official documentation. Uh, they were coming from the very top, from maybe the advisor of the Tsar or the, some general. The, the pogroms were planned, so it was planned from, planned from the top. It was clear, clear there was documentation for that. So people were really scared because there is no protection. If it is the top is planning, you can't do much. It's like fascist Germany, right? You can't do much from, to hide from the uh, top. So um, some were aware, and again, some were unaware. But after the first program happened, or maybe even before that, there was a Jewish teacher, school teacher, who just realized that you know there is no other way other than to self-organize, do self-organized defense. So they they did something which was very unusual for Jews, very unusual to you know buy weapons and to train militias. You know, just only their own militia at free time they would train them, train and organize basically organization of self-defense groups. So 
uh, the nearest was, I'm blanking, uh, I think it was, I'm blanking on the city, uh, Kishinev, yes, Kishinev. Kishinev was had the biggest worst pogrom. So Kishinev was a big city with maybe 30% of Jews. And the pogroms were there like worse because the people like were really low vibration. Jews were so sort of, you can go and um, take stuff and poor people would just go and break everything and, and uh, harm people and take stuff. So thousands of people were harmed. And I don't remember how many died, but a big number. I think, it, I think a few thousand were harmed and I think on one of the biggest programs it was on about a hundred dead. So when the same crowd went to Dubasar, they just walked, it was a walking distance. Uh, the self defense, defense was absolutely ready. So they did several shots above the heads and that was sufficient to turn the crowd around. And during the time of pogroms, there was no pogroms ever in Dubasar because they have self defense and the teacher was organizing that. You know, the most humanitarian sweet person who, who we can find would organize it. So, um, of course I would imagine um, people arriving Walmart, Walmart, if something like goes wrong, you have to go to Walmart and steal a generator and somebody will be guarding it. So somebody would be guarding Walmart, right? So you would have to, uh, so Walmart possibly would be the safest place to be there because you have lots of resources there and uh, people with guns would occupy that place and uh, they would live longer until they get, get the infections, right? The infections would, so you need also the pharmacy, you need antibiotics and you need water. So in Walmart there is water. So water generators, antibiotics, that's the main thing. So, so I, w I would kind of play the scenario. So if worse comes to worse, what do you do? Where do you get gas? So for years I kept like a couple tanks of gas worth in canisters uh, in backup. And you need kerosene, you need kerosene lamp and things of that sort. Uh, kerosene is much more efficient than um, generator. The generator would, would um, you would run out of gas much faster. So kerosene, candles, salt, antibiotics. <laughs> uh, you can find this list on, on the web and uh, some of them are better than others because some of them are theoretical and some of them are from people who really know what, 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 what they're talking about. So in Russia, we really know what you're talking about. So um, self-defense, yes. Uh, you have to organize, self-organize and to self-organize if things happen, if worse comes to worse, where do you go? Staying at home is great until you run out of resources, all right? Um, I would say the knowledge of how things are is absolutely essential. Knowledge of if there is, so radio, having a hand crank radio is essential. <sighs> right. Um, Recharging your phones if it, you know, I don't think phone station stations would work. So hand crank radio would, would be the key. So you have to like get the news, know how bad the, the, the problem is. Like here in San Diego, we got a couple of out, power outages. And first thing you try to find out how big it is. So while the phone is working, you can map the area. So is it the whole San Diego or your house or your apartment, right? And uh, one time it was maybe five hours in the evening time, so it was all dark around. And one time it was about 12 hours also at night, uh, starting from evening and then going through the, through the day. So we get some experience of, of that. And, uh, you know, my knowledge is that, you know, it's easy, easy, but my uh, inner emotions are panic attack because from the past, I, I really know how bad can it be, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so staying in peace and believing you will be fine is essential. So prayer and meditation, not allowing yourself to get more, more news than necessary because there is lots of that small talk and the small talk is just killing you, right? You go to people and they discuss, they kind of cr create the negativity around you. So you have to stay in the positive while knowing the, the news. 
And it's not any different than in this reality. Like right now, there is things happening, so you have to be in, in the know for practical reasons while not uh, lowering your vibration. So staying in the high vibration while knowing what's happening. So to know what's happening, it's really nice to find the key informers. And the key informers would be people close to the power, right? Like secretaries, medical personnel, cleaning personnel, um, lower guard officers in the power. So walk into your local authority building, like police, fire department, and um, city hall, and integrating there would be the wisest thing to do. And of course you have to make yourself useful, right? So some of my ancestors at bad times where they go to work at hospital, like some of them became nurses because nurses are always needed, right? You know, everything else goes down, but you still can be a nurse and, and uh, work there. Um, you can figure it out basically, but uh, working there and making yourself useful. There will be teams, there will be reorganization, making yourself useful while not being uh, much in the show, in the, you know, being visible is, has positive and negative because you would have to take sides. And if you take your own side, you, you might be in trouble. So be practical, right? Be practical. But that's what will happen. There'll be crowds here and there, and you would learn the things around. And uh, sometimes running away is very efficient. It's a very efficient way to survive. Um, I have tons of stories about running away, even with the families, right? <laughs> tons of stories. So here is one story. Um, right? I guess we, we need to bring a little spirituality here, right? Um, yeah, some people, just look at the people around. Some people are completely crushed by the crisis. They are so embedded in the system. When the system crumbles and falls apart, they fall apart. And some never recover. My, my parents survived through the crash and they died very soon because I don't know why, but you can see how it, how it damaged them. It's not even, not even the crisis itself. They fell out of the system after the crisis, but the system was rebuilt. They didn't find themselves an energetic connection to the system. That's, I would say that. My father-in-law, was it father-in-law or stepfather? Stepfather, he hated the bureaucracy around. He was during this, he was one of the managers during the Soviet time. So when, and always on opposition to everything, he didn't like everything. Being a manager and not liking it was like, eh, his position. And anyway, um, low, lower level managers. Um, and then, and member of the party, of course, because all managers have to be members of the party. <laughs> all right, and then the crisis happens. He found himself, how do you say, disabled? Disabled, he lost a leg, a leg a diabetes leg, and then uh, he was surrounded by books. He was like a crazy reader, reading like books constantly. So he, he invented for himself. He first became a writer. And I wouldn't judge his writing. But second, he found himself, created for himself a little company which was offering the services around supplying, how do you call it, washing machines. That is a word for that. Utility machines, that is a word for that. Um, so gas stoves. Uh, in the past, it was all centralized. So in the new system, there was a niche and he occupied the niche. But he went under the pressure of the 
local mafia because everything has to be controlled by the mafia. So he had to pay big fines and it made the, the, the business barely self-occupy, uh, self-sustaining. So he worked from home, just call, uh, you know, he had one driver and, and one uh, supplier and he was just, and one uh, person and a person who advertises somewhere. So it was very, very homemade, but it kind of worked for him. Very interesting, like in a complete vacuum, lots of businesses were, were created. So he was, that's what he created for himself. And it was actually um, admirable, but, but he didn't survive long for that. It was just kind of, there was disconnection from, from everybody else. Like his circle of friends and everything else fell apart. And this, the energies didn't flow right. He wasn't, he learned some lessons, all about le learning lessons. And when you, the lessons you learn go down, you learn all the lessons of all three chakras, but how do you raise up? So, so basically from spiritual perspective, if the lessons come to the first chakra survival, it's not worth learning the lesson over and over for many years. So unless, unless there is more coming. For him, it, no, nothing else came. Uh, my mother was, um, she was perfect at her science work. And it was my mistake to advise her to drop the science work and go um, enjoy herself and do other things in the family because she couldn't find herself in that capacity. She just was lost. In science work, she was like having a nice social circle and um, very advanced in many spiritual things. So it was work, science work, and spirituality circles as they were in Russia at that time, which was very advanced, actually, very advanced. She was visiting, uh, actually, the most advanced gurus of the time, really. I, I wasn't, she was advanced gurus. It was Christian, but uh, very advanced avatars like few, but very advanced. They were like really like, still I'm we are looking down at them as shining saints. So she was there, she was, she was doing the right stuff, but then she, she chose to exit very fast and through cancer, right? So, uh, it's okay, I would say. Now I see it's, it's okay to exit. But if you, if you carry the light, if you carry the light, that, that would make sense to, to survive. May, make, feel, feel your, with your understanding now, with your understanding of light, the energies of the decay actually make it easier to shine. Make it easier to shine. So if you can hold that vibration of shining, the prayer vibration, the vibration of peace and bliss, it would be actually easier to, because the reality actually becomes less real in those times. It's like, <laughs> it's laughable how higher dimensional it becomes. Even as lower vibration go down, the high vib high, higher vibration goes up. It's like more space for, for creating new order in that chaos, right? It's, I don't have a name for that, but basically uh, the traditional name, it, in the dark it's easier to shine. When it's dark around, shining is much easier. It's, the light is more visible. People of the high vibration can see each other much easier. It just, you can read the faces actually. Like you walk on the street, you can read the faces. It's just so obvious. You are attracted to people. Oh, so running away, as I gave like a little spiritual and this, uh, perspective. Like, hey guys, uh, have, have more people if you like to pop up. Any questions so far? That was wonderful, Max. Um, a wonderful story um, that I could totally relate to. And my answer to that is, is 99% of society have been running away from themselves for most of their lives. Running away from what? Running away from themselves for most of their lives. Absolutely. Okay. Completely disconnected. Um, and the system plays a big part in that. And um, 
the word fear came up there in your discussion earlier on, and it's an emotion that's ingrained in us when we're very, very young by our education system and by religion. Okay. And unfortunately, it grows from there. And it's like a cancer that takes the body over. Sure. And we can remain in that fear mode until we leave the vessel or until we decide, as you just described there, your mother got ill with cancer and she, and she decided, she decided that she had enough and she wanted to go home, okay? And I always remember, um, I always remember explaining to my psychotherapist um, that I wanted to get out of here and she couldn't understand me. And I said, I'm not suicidal. This reality is too painful for me. This is not my home. I want to go, you know? And it took a while for her to understand where I was coming from. So as I explained there, you're on, when I left the forest with my dog and got on the motorway, I had to go back up to my ego and hope that I got to the other side of the motorway safe, okay? And on the motorway, I came across a carcass of a dead rabbit. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the carcass of the dead rabbit and the rabbit tried to cross the road and he couldn't. Boom. He got hit by a car, okay? So, all those visions played a part in my reality coming from the forest back to my house. And I'm sitting here with you having a discussion on spirituality. And everything that you described is real, you know. And as I've just responded, how do we reconnect with self? Okay, now there's a few answers to that. As, uh, there's a wonderful book out there, I don't know whether you read it, called Awareness by Anthony DeMello. He was a Jesuit. And in his opening, in his opening uh, chapter, he says, we're born asleep, we live in our sleep. We get married in our sleep. We have children in our sleep. <laughs> and we die in our sleep. And we forget this wonderful thing called life. Mm -hmm. That's so true. So, we go around with these blinkers on and a lot of us through fear can't look outside the box and see that you are not your body as I said to my son there recently and he laughed at me I said Darren you're not your body that's just the vest you jumped into and, that sort of way. and he couldn't understand that concept no. So I've been given the opportunity to tap into this awareness to realize that, yeah, I'm a wonderful spiritual being having this human experience and it's just a game and a part of it. But I'm here to complete a job, okay? And I came into this reality knowing that, okay? could sit here and dissect our soul contract and say, well, okay, you know, here's Max and he's discussing trauma and he's discussing disasters. And straight away, I went back up in the morning and I said, well, okay, did they come into this reality with anything that Max has described? Did they come back in here to delete some of what Max has described from my SIM card from another reality. Or I like that. Did I come in? Sorry, Wendy. I said I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Or did I come in here? Okay. Um Nothing but pure unconditional love, okay, which I believe I am, that had been contaminated, which is a big word, by the illusion. 
Yeah. So coming back to self is a wonderful expression. Where does the journey start? You know, I came back to self today in the forest and there was only me and the dog. And the dog even left me. I took my dog off the lead and he went off smelling and came back to me when he was ready. But I was left with the smell of the forest. I was left with the trees. I was left with the sounds of water. I was left with the sounds of wildlife. And I was part of that. And then the, f and then the fear kicked in and I went, oh, dinner time, wife, kitchen, mower away, crossing the road, I have to get back. You know, so I can get distracted very, very easily. And that's okay. Because we're living, we're living in shark infested water and we have to make sure that we don't get bitten. As I said earlier on, when I caught the news this morning, oh, there's another suicide bomber just killed 50 people in Turkey. Now, I can't walk away from that. I've taken her into the subconscious. So, as the galactics say, only the best came back. And we've done this before. And I think you are aware of that, Max, and anybody else in the room. We've done this ascension a process before. You know, we're not, we're not new on the block. Um, we're not new kids on the block. We knew coming in what we were facing. And we're now at a stage where it's falling apart. Yes, I totally agree with you. Okay, uh, where do you want, uh, which, which, you, you, wrote, you raised many topics, which one do you want to address first? I'm sorry if I did, and I'm sorry if I went off the, the no, conversation. No, all of them are good, just, you know, it's your choice, which one do you want to address first? So I have a choices, um, system is really bad, everybody is sleeping, how do you find yourself, terrorist acts, and what's actually you should do, like deleting there. Which of the topics is should we address first? Well, let's start with the system, right? As you started. Oh, okay. do, do one? You have other choice? I'm an open book. I'm All right. Easy. All right. So here is a joke from Russia. It's not Jewish joke. It's a Russian joke. So good. <laughs> and it was so profound. I think it should become uh, popular here as well. Um, everybody laughed and everybody understood, even children. Uh, a plumber comes to the apartment, looks at the pipes and says, you know, the whole system needs to be changed. That's all. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, everybody understood it. The whole as, system, you need to change the whole system. <laughs> as, I, as I do say something similar when I'm talking on this topic to friends and whatever, I do say, you know the way we can do a system restore on your PC when you get the virus or where you get a corrupt file where you have yeah. to go back. Mm -hmm. That's where we need to go. We need to do the system restore and go back to the beginning because 99% of what reality told us has basically poisoned us from our education system to religion. Okay. Uh -huh. now, I'm not labeling, I'm not labeling, you know, religion completely. And as I say that you touched on the Holocaust and I visited Outswitch last year and I walked around and, Something caught me eye, and it was the it was the, uh, the pharmaceutical company Pfizer that supplied the gas to the Jews to exterminate them. And I went, "Oh my God!" And that stayed with me because there's a pharmaceutical company Pfizer that's in walking distance of my home, like you know, the sort of way. And I dissected that, and I dissected this, and I dissected them. I was trying to figure out, you know. What was the plan? What was the bigger picture? Was it just genocide? Was it pulling the population? Was it the banksters in control? Was it, you know? Um, and I have a 
haven't got the answer. I play around with that in my mind and try and come up with a conclusion. And I keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. Um, do we really want to go in that direction? Yes, I guess. Oh. Yeah, I, I, it's hard to research the topic. Nazism is still a pretty dark topic, especially for Jews. Um, I will, when, when I have a chance, I will post the book, which was really good. It really helped me to get first-hand perspective on, on, on the situation. First, there is a nice biography of the Churchill. And the second thing, I can't remember the name. I will, I will remember in a minute. There is a nice book. So reading books is good because Watching movies is really harder because there is imagery which is hard to take. But in books, you can take it at your speed. So books were great. And it's kind of filtered so you can take it in your way. But basically, understand the mechanism. Uh, there, is, there was a lot of spiritual play in the Nazism. A lot of spiritual play. At some point, I think... It was permitted for many reasons. It, I think the the answer wasn't the wasn't the answer wasn't predefined by the creator, divine forces. Because on one hand, it was a purification in many ways. It was unification. So when it, I mean, the earth needs unification. So they offered unification, and I think they got the permit to unify the earth. And um, only when it became clear that their unification was rotten, then they lost the opportunity. Because initially it was super clean and perfect. When they took over France, basically the France, French uh, army collaborated with, uh, with the Germans. They gave up, basically. There was a plot, or how do you say, the, there was a secret agreement so they they allowed germans to come through and to, to, to unite so there was a lot of synergy there it was peaceful unity un, unification right um only later it became clear that the system they built is uh, rotten and flawed it cannot sustain itself without killing more people it was unification without the basis for unification. It's like, not like Europe united now and is capable of surviving more or less. There they united and they weren't capable of doing things. It was an experiment which came out to be flawed in, inside the Germany, United Germany, which took over the Europe. It couldn't handle it. It couldn't handle it. It couldn't uh, be sufficiently efficient to handle it properly. They were too, too they, they, they relied on, on criminals, basically. The, the, the top of the party were like professional criminals, like real bad professional criminals and uh, psychopaths. And without the good top, you can't really do much. So, and the same thing happened to, to, to Russia as well. It was a good idea, good unification, but again, the it was started by criminals and the criminals were which started, they weren't bad enough. So when uh, new criminals came uh, with Stalin, they were even nastier and they were able to take off over the intermediates in the, the first wave. So all of the first wave were removed and killed. So the second, second wave of criminals were even worse. So so, Max, those second wave of criminals, were they from this reality? Absolutely, yeah. They were like, uh, they weren't highly spiritual people for sure. It was actually the uh, selection of mediocre people. They were lowest possible vibration, illiterate, uh, lower spiritual vibration. It was really take over by uh, by lowest chakra people uh, 
there was some some mysterious miraculous uh, spiritual uh, thing there which I don't understand it would be nice to channel I really don't know when I speak about that they say just don't go there basically they don't want even to cover it so so let's let's just keep it as is there was something bad happening but um, we don't know what it is uh, but again it was a unification but um, that unification which is centralized militarized and um, uh, dictatorship the totalitarian system it was tried in 20th century it just doesn't work there is always that idea of system being rotten a rotting of the system self rotting and, and un being unable to sustain itself there is something in uh, in the nature of humans which make totalitarian regimes not not functioning not being able to function and there is tons of examples um, so um, another Russian joke um, an American comes to Russia or no, a Western comes to Russia on the car and he drives the car and then and finally the car gets into the hole in the ground like open plumbing uh, sewage hole so the wheel falls there and uh, breaks off and the policeman comes and and uh, and the Western says, you know, here is the hole in the ground in the road. Why didn't you put some uh, markers here so so people wouldn't fall down? And the poli Russian policeman uh, said, you know, when you were coming, did you see the flag? And that's it. So yeah, um, you know, you were warned when you came here. You were warned. Um, I, I miss the laughter on the other side. Did you get it? <laughs> we got you, Max. We got you. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so, um, uh huh. So the there are several points. One of them is this terrorist acts. Uh, some of them, yes, are how they call it genuine genuine like someone really went crazy and it is part of the computer games part of the propaganda part of the television part of the um movies uh i i don't watch television and i hope you don't if you need the news just just read it on 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 in text on uh, internet don't don't watch television because there is too much brainwashing there you can't really resist it but when i travel and sometimes I'm in the doctor's office, sometimes like, you know, perfect combination, a dental chair and the news over there, right? You, you've been, your teeth have been drilled and you're, you see the news over there. It's, it's the same kind of vibration. Um, but you know, when, when you're in the airport, sometimes you can't escape it. So um, there you can see that pumping up the violence, pumping um, into the brain. So if somebody watches that violence, I, I wouldn't be surprised that they get crazy. But in most cases, I would say it's it's pre pre organized. I believe it's it's uh, the um, how do we call it now? Powers that be or uh, conspirators? I like to call them conspirators. This uh, cons um, uh, con secret power above the governments. I think they need to keep their vibrations low and the anger up. So they they professionally plan in a planned way create the, the terrorist acts uh, I would say my estimate maybe 50 to 50 or 80 to 20 most of them I think they're pre-planned they're pre-organized there is so many um, traces of that or organizational um, you know just how they staged how they staged they staged in a time and place so to to lower the vibration, uh, to manipulate the market, to, um, it's funny, the presidents are so powerless. I think there were like tapes of Lyndon Johnson on NPR radio, his recordings were played and I was amazed to see how he plans his political steps to be announced. Was it Lyndon, I'm pretty sure Lyndon Johnson. 
announced at the time when other events which are not political, uh, you know, sometimes the other events like sports events or cultural events would take priority. So he would wait for the time when there is no news to announce his news, right? And that's, that's you know, <laughs> that's in the nature of modern um, uh, illusion of democracy, modern illusion of democracy. The, the news are manufactured and presidents, presidents are helpless. They are just functionaries under bigger system. They are dependent on bigger, bigger forces. Like, you know, Hillary Clinton says that, you know, we will get to the bottom of it about the UFOs. I'm pretty sure she's aware. I'm pretty sure she meets aliens all the time. Um, so that's, I think, is, is nice. She claims to, to, she takes it on her agenda. But um, I don't think she makes the decisions. Even she, if she will be a president, she wouldn't be making the decision. So you see my vibration went that down, so I started discussing politics. But next lesson, spiritual lesson, is work as a pump. Go down, grab something, bring it up. Go down, grab something, bring it up. Bring it up. Uh, that's your, it's again, it's a choice, but make it, make this choice and keep lifting weights. Lift, it's spiritual life of a modern avatar is weightlifting. Spiritual life, life of modern avatar is weightlifting. Lift weights, uplift everything, uplift the humanity, carry the torch, carry the bliss, carry the highest vibration. Allah, 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 Adamana Hurana Guruda Haraya Unaha Omanaha Omanaha Haram Unaha Uranaha Aramaha So we please you bless the Politicians, we bless the good side in them. Everyone has a good side. Accept that this is, the system is evil, but the people who are caught in the system, they have good side. They are born from parents who love them. They have, they have good side. They have the, all the capacity to be, be enlightened. Again, from my experience in Russia, uh, we like there were very few people there on the top, and at some point they did wonderful actions. They were capable of of compassion. They were capable of lifting everybody up. So there were moments of unity. There were moments of upliftment. Uh, in Kennedy's time. My favorite um, science figure, Jim Watson, he, is, he, has, he combines lots of properties. Some of them are very enlightened and some of them are darker. He is sort of uh, an autist. Uh, he's out there, but not respecting fellow humans very much. So, so he has two properties, but, but he's enlightened and he, he's the, the discoverer of a double helix, right? So he uplifted the science. That's the major discovery, discovery of, the, of the modern times. He uplifted the science a lot up there and it's two people just made it, made it happen by their passion. So he was invited at the Kennedy time, he was invited to be part of the science establishment to plan the new science. It didn't last long and ended up with, with the assassination of, the, of, of John Kennedy, but, but there are times when, you know, even enlightened people are invited up there. So be ready, 
there could be a possibility for you to play for real. So if you are into politics, if you understand the mechanics, be ready to put on the boots, like how do you say, rubber boots, like up to the here, and go into the sewage and clean it up and, uh, and build something beautiful there. Like another person, another of my favorite people, like if I, like if I, on the wall, I would put, put them second, second, very enlightened uh, spiritual humans in Russia, at the time when democ democracy was taken, uh, you know, they invited their friends. So one of them became the minister of culture. <laughs> Just that crazy. Like uh, one of the dissidents and very cultural people who was always on all opposite sides, uh, singing by the fire, performing songs uh, in front of, you know, other people, enlightened, intelligent scientists and other intelligent people, enlightened people. No, you become a minister of culture and you're supposed to write something, you know, approve something, give, um, decide, you know, this building goes to this group or the, to this group, all, all of that administrative, admi it's administrative stuff. You know, they didn't survive long there. Obviously, nice people, they, they don't survive. But there was, a, there was a time when, you know, most of them went there and played that game. And... Um, Many good things happened, actually. Many good things happened. It was like a few breaths of fresh air. That, oh, that's how it is supposed to be. Like, that's, you know, good things are really possible even on the governmental level. It was so obvious, so obvious that, you know, just normal things are happening. Like, and finally, normal things are happening. These prohibitions are lifted and these good decisions are made. So, so expect positive and be ready to you know, step into the, the jungle, right? So be strong enough, be ready to, and it doesn't have to be on central level, it could be on local level. Again, as we discussed, I don't think totalitarian centralized system is viable at all. I think it all comes to lots of local, lots of local things. Just go to your town hall and organ, self-organize. When the system crashes, I, Challenge you, I, it would be your choice. Go and self-organize, light workers. It would be your time. And don't just create a new government and can in, not can disconnect from the people and from, from police and army. You have to self-organize and still be friends, integrated with f firefighters, hospitals, and stuff. It has to be. You can't really live without without that. At bad times, you know, I came to America in 93, just, you know, just after three years of the darkest times. And I was surprised. You can see a glass sculpture decorated with little um, stones underneath. And nobody would throw the stone in a glass sculpture. It's just you know, unbelievable. There would be a big window and stones underneath, like decorative, how do you call them, little from the sea, the ocean stones. Um, in Russia, all the windows were broken, like all, like all the windows would be metal, 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 no stones around, and fences, fences, fences. Like in America, there is a lot of places where there is no fences, like houses, houses, you know, no protection. So in the darkest times, the most uh, profitable industry is fence building. We even jo joke that we have a, we can have a degree in fence building, like Institute of Safe, University of Fence Building, right? So yeah, if you have that capacity in dark times, just start a fence building company. You will be in demand. You will be the richest and most busiest people will respect you. Building fences and metal windows, metal doors, and, you know, protecting the houses. <laughs> All that security. All right. I lost my last viewer. Oh, we have four. Okay. Oh, searching for yourself. In the darkness, you find yourself. Uh, in depression, you find yourself. Enjoy feeling down. Enjoy the fear. 
it helps you find yourself in the desperation when everything else falls apart. There is that core which is still there, and that is you. Obviously, going to the forest allows you to find yourself untouched and expand. And also going into the relationship, going connecting to other people allows you to find yourself because you see yourself in their eyes. And in every new eyes, you discover yourself from new angle. So you understand yourself better. So discover yourself and build yourself. You are the creator of that ego, of that personality. I think uh, right now, uh, maybe, I'm not sure actually. Sabrina is doing a webinar on ego. So Bashar defines ego as the spiritual mechanism, conscious spiritual mechanism, which helps you to retain individuality. Spiritual mechanism, conscious spiritual mechanism that is designed to retain your individuality. Not having ego for a human is unhealthy because you will just be too much affected by ideas of others. So when you decide what to accept and what to not, what not, not to accept, what to delete, what to uplift in your system of values, that is you who decide. So you that that unity, that unit is held together by the mechanism is called, which is called ego. So fighting ego as, as that mechanism is, is not practical. You don't really fight it. You accept it as it is. Uh, without it, you wouldn't be, it wouldn't exist. So there is this whole system which keeps you together. And we don't really know how it's designed, but I'm sure there are <laughs> programs running there and there are conscious beings which really help you to, like guides and guards, which help you to stay together. Because, you know, staying together in that mess is, is hard. So somebody, something, and somebody is keeping you together. So don't fight it, this this togetherness, your personality, that's, you need it for, for lessons. Without, le without that, there is nothing to, there will be nobody to learn the lessons, right? You will fall apart. So, uh, but you know, when the first chakra kicks in and survival chakra, then it kind of grows and occupies the whole personality. So uh, keep it in place, you don't really, let it to take all the decisions. It, uh, it's a balance. Again, pump, like fear, which is produced by the first chakra, survival fear, uplifted. Actually, the color of the first chakra is red and the color of the top chakra is purple. And this color, are very, it's uh, the opposite sides of the rainbow, but they come together, they go one to another, purple into red and red into the purple. So there is that, that top chakra and bottom chakra resonate. So it's easy from the survival go right to the, to the prayer to God. So when you're scared, it's actually easiest to pray because there is that one to seven connection. So uplift yourself from the fear, uplift yourself right into the connection to the creator because that is always there. That connection is always there. Uplift yourself, discover yourself and uplift yourself. And as you uplift yourself, uplift others. Uh, I use chanting. When I'm scared, I just chant Om. And that is what you can use. Just pray in a very simple way, like one, Collapse all the complexity of yourself into one point, into one ooh, note. 
and connect with that note to God and trust the Divine Mother, the God, to to help you. That's that simple. Discover that point, assembly point. Discover that point of ego. Discover that connection through ego to God. Very simple. Allah Mana Rahalanaya Ayaho Mana Mura Manaya O mana ha o mana ya hanna O mana ha o mana hana ya hulanna O ma o ma hunna O ma o ma hunna O ma o ma hunna Let's start wrapping up. I think we are over time, seriously over time. Um, Thank you, Max. We have, I have with me several more people. Let me see who else is there. All right, hey Val, hey Wendy, old friends. Um, I hope I didn't bring the vibrations too much down. Uh, the idea is the idea is that we'll go through the dark times and come up refreshed. There'll be a new earth and um, you know we are hybrids. We come here, lots of hybridized, lots of mixed lineage, spiritual and genetic. I come from Russians and Jews from uh, genetically and from lots of different incarnations in different countries doing different stuff male, male female spiritual i certainly was a thief in a certain incarnation i i i feel that hacker mentality all the time i mentioned that to someone and then she she thought she she um, she went crazy thinking that i'm hacking your computer your computer and uh, doing something bad to her so, uh, which I didn't, really, no, it's not, it's not fun, boring. Um, anyway, but um, I, it's your choice, I invite you to hack this system and uh, ascend through hacking. Yeah, let's hack the, the spiritual component of it and convert it into open galactic community of the fourth dimension. I invite more blessings and unless you have questions, let's start wrapping up. No, thanks. Uh, Max, I've no, I've no, um, I've no questions. Um, uh, I really enjoyed that discussion. You know, it took many, it took many directions, but I think we ended back where we started. Um, and, uh, much enjoy it. <laughs> I like that though. I, both of you, um, thank you both. And thank you, Max, for articulating everything that, every, <laughs> it's like everything you said, I completely resonated with from the beginning to the end. Um, things that I've been unable to articulate, um, experiences, um, being able, wanting to just be in that vibration of peace, no matter what was going on around me and to want that for everything and everyone around me and that need it's it was such a driving need for me for as long as I can remember to create that and to be a child having chosen certain experiences and where that was the only way I could escape my chaos around me was to feel that I could 
I don't want to say detach myself, but you kind of have to. I, I to detach myself to find that place as a child to find control. Um, in a circumstance that you feel you have zero control and to know that you can't change it and the only thing you can do is create the space of peace inside of you um, and even as a child people could recognize um, that ability to do that um, and oddly we're jealous of that. And the stories um, about, you know, your struggles and, and, and immediately I'm becoming, I became even more grateful, as I have many times, about choosing being born here in the United States. Um, and just that... Um, Do you have a zoo there, Wendy? What? Do you have a zoo there? It's not me. It seriously sounds like a zoo going on in the background. Oh, that's, that's in my place. You. My place. Wendy, oh, can you move the microphone closer to your mouth? Just bend it closer because it's you're too quiet. Uh huh. Nice. Is that better? Yeah, it's a little better. Okay. If I turn it up too loud, it hurts my ears. Yeah, it's um, my, I can mute myself, I guess. It's, yeah, the zoo oh, is oh, here. No, you're okay. Um, so I, I just remember feeling that, um, that needing to find that space. But what you said about the stories, I, with the stories you were talking about, about and me being so grateful that my higher self chose the things that it did, and especially being born here in this country and um just how blessed i've always felt for that and then to hear those stories just made me feel even more grateful um because as we say we all choose these things there were so many great topics touched on too even as far as like the you know the disasters and the vibration of that and there's still a lot of places we can dive into that as far as the realities of all of that <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I, I just wanted to reiterate that it just everything you said resonated so highly, just beginning to end, and, and you too, Christopher, and, and just everything you all shared. And um, I, I, I think I'm just a little too tired to even articulate what I want to say, but I just wanted to thank you for all of that. And, and um, it just everything was it, it's very, very real and very touching and very resonant with me. Um, and, and that's really the whole thing about raising our vibrations and keeping our vibrations high and understanding that that is the mechanics of what creates our realities. Um, that staying in that place of peace, no matter what, um, and finding how do I do that minute by minute in this, this monkey reality, you know, how do I find that, that, that place of peace and, and till that illusionary moment passes in which I'm feeling out of harmony, um, there's just so many places we could take this. So I, I, I love it. I thank you for creating this space for this. It's wonderful. I'd just like to say namaste and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Max. Thank you, everyone else that joined. I love the stories. And um, I look forward to your next hangout. Thank you again. Thank you, Valerie. So in half an hour, we get uh, Sabrina starting her hangout um, to find her um, go to humancolony.org and there is a link on the uh, Hucola calendar. Um, click on the link, you will, you'll get there. Um, and we have um, Reiki class 1A, um, $50 next Sunday, um, same place, humancolony.org, Hucola calendar and click on that and you can uh, RSVP. Uh, and even if you have uh, 
other Reikis, um, um, I would welcome you to 1A class. It's nice to have other people joining. It's more like a hang together class where um, everybody is, even experienced Reiki healers get, um, get something to learn and something to uplift and something to share. Oh, great. And I'll come uh, back again. Yes, come back again. Oh, and graduates, wanna, yes? Oh, I just wanted to mention too, Max, um, that, um, you know, this whole, this whole idea of, you know, self-knowledge, self-awareness, self-love. Um, I'm, I'm finishing up. I'm on my last two weeks of this Bashar self-love challenge that we've been doing. And tomorrow evening, I'll be posting the event today, I hope. <laughs> um, uh, tomorrow evening will be our sixth hangout of the seven weeks of our self-love challenge. Um, ah. so I just I, I just want to invite everybody to that. This is just another element of learning how to love ourselves. And um, so it doesn't matter if you've been following or not following. You can jump in any time. It doesn't matter. You can start today from here the next seven weeks on your own. It doesn't matter where you start. The point is, is that this is all, everything we're doing here is all about self-love and discovering who we are and, and the beauty within us. And that's really what all of these created spaces are all about. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. Wonderful. Thank you, Wendy. Allah, 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 Allah na ya huranna Umara ya humahiyanna Unam Unamanam Unam Amahayanna All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you for co-creation of this webinar. And I uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you, Max. Bye. Bye.